What if I told you that the photos you see online don't always tell the full story? This photo, for example, it looks great, but it's actually fake. Or at least it's not a single photo, it's actually multiple photos combined together into what is known as a composited photo or a composite. To create this photo, I actually took multiple photos, one for the background and one for myself at the foreground and then combined them together using Lightroom and Photoshop. And I'm gonna show you how to do that. Now, it might come as a surprise to you, but this is a really popular technique, especially in landscape photography and in astrophotography, and even in automotive photography, where they'll take multiple photos and combine the best parts of those photos to get the ultimate perfect photo. Now, for my photo, I did one long exposure of the background at 10 seconds. But in order to do that, I needed to use one of these. This is a variable ND filter. And when you twist it, it actually reduces the amount of light coming into your camera. So you can do these longer 10 second, 30 second exposures in the middle of the day. But if you do a 10 second exposure and you're trying to shoot a human subject, it's almost impossible for that human subject to stay still for more than say half a second. So I did a second exposure of myself at one over 50 so that I would be nice and sharp. And then I took both of those photos and combined them together using Lightroom and Photoshop. First, let's edit this photo. And I'm just gonna throw in one of my presets really quick. And then I'm gonna adjust some of these highlights and shadows and just get this base photo to the point that I'm happy with it. Now the trick with this type of edit is to keep the edits the same or as similar as possible between the different photos. So that when you take the subject and you cut it out and you put it on top of the other photo, it doesn't look too out of place. So in this case, I'm gonna grab the two photos that I want. This one, I've already made all of my edits to. I'm gonna say sync and I'm pretty much gonna sync everything except for the two masks that I created that were specific to brightening up me and adding more color to my sunglasses. I also have this version of the photo here, which I'm gonna drop as well. Now, the only difference between these two photos is I switched my polarization so that on the one photo I had more reflections and on the other I had fewer reflections. So maybe we'll export both of them and see which one looks better in the composite. Okay, so I'm actually gonna open this view in Photoshop by right clicking and saying edit in Photoshop. And I'll also select the other two and say edit in Photoshop. Now that we have our photos open inside of Photoshop, I'm actually gonna go over and I think I like the version that has more reflections. So I'm gonna say duplicate layer, duplicate it into the other version of the base file. So now I have both of them opened in the same document. I'm gonna turn that long exposure off for just a second and I'm gonna select this guy and say, select my subject. And depending on your photo, this may or may not do a good job. I'm just gonna clean up the selection really quick. So let's deselect that and just add that to our selection. Now that I've got a really rough selection of myself, I'm gonna go up to select and mask. We're gonna refine this selection by just doing some smart radius, maybe like two pixels, smooth it out a bit and add a little bit of a feather. So when we look at how the two combine together, it's actually done a pretty good job aside from some little areas that we can probably brush out and <laughs> My feet look like they're floating. So I'm just gonna go into that mask by selecting it, and then I'm gonna grab a, a brush. And in this case, black would be a race. So I think I'm just gonna brush a few areas to just clean it up really quickly. The one thing I do wanna do is add in the shadow around my feet. So I'm just gonna take this brush reduce the opacity, and I'm just gonna reveal the layer underneath so it looks a little bit more natural. One other thing you can do, because you are separated from the background, if I wanted to put layers in between myself and the background, like maybe I want like a glowing halo effect, if I add another layer, and let's say I just grab a white paintbrush, set it to maybe like 10% opacity, and then just do a little bit of brushing 
around the edges, I can kind of create this glowing halo effect. Or if I really wanted to get crazy, I could blur the background even more. So if I grab that background, I'm actually gonna duplicate it and turn it into a smart object. Then what I can do is I can go to filter, blur, motion blur. If I just set it to like, I don't know, 100 pixels. And then I'm gonna grab that smart filter, invert it by hitting Control I, so it turns it off. Then if I wanna brush it in, I can grab that mask. I'm gonna go back to my paintbrush, make sure it's set to white. Let's just up the opacity to maybe 100%. And then I could start to brush in even more blur in the areas that I wanted to see it. Once I'm happy with it, all I have to do is hit Control S or save, and that will dump that photo back into my Lightroom catalog so that the next time I go into Lightroom, that photo will show up inside my Lightroom catalog right next to the original photos. If you enjoyed this video, let me know down in the comments below. And if you wanna see some of the behind the scenes of when we captured this photo, you can check out this video here, or if you wanna jump into another Lightroom tutorial, I'd recommend this video right here. And until the next one, go shoot photos. 